वेलकम टू एपीजी पाठशाला आई एम परलक्ष्मी रिटायर्ड प्रोफेसर एंड यूजीसी एमरेटिस फेलो डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ लाइब्रेरी एंड इंफॉर्मेशन साइंस आंध्र यूनिवर्सिटी विशाखापट्टन दिस मॉड्यूल इज ऑन इंफॉर्मेशन सर्विसेस इट इज अ पार्ट ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन सोर्सेस एंड सर्विसेस सिस्टम्स ऑफ पेपर फाइव information sources is a very vast area this particular module is only an introduction about different types of information services information is available in myriad of forms and formats there is a flood of information when there is flood of water what we will do we'll construct dams and then will channelize this water to the needy areas through canals right canal left canal we'll talk like that same thing is necessary for flood of information also so this information is stored in libraries this flood of information is stored in libraries maybe in the form of books journals thesis and dissertations or pamphlets or any such kind of uh, ephemeral material also so there is flood of literature stored in the library but this has to be channelized to the users according to their requirements so it has to be customized it has to be tailor made for this purpose a number of services have been emerged depending upon the user requirement you cannot provide the same material to every user so we have to provide according to his requirements for example a student requires a textbook to prepare for an examination or to prepare an assignment a researcher requires micro thought that is available that is the current information or primary information available in journal articles or in conference proceedings or in research reports for his research that is an advanced level an executor requires information to take a decision to or to you implement a particular research project so they require still more advanced information in a condensed manner so depending upon their requirements we have to customize the information and we have to channelize this information for this purpose a variety of services are developed from ancient time till now a variety of sir information services are made available and we are going to discuss in detail about these services one after the other in this module information is power as it is the basis for knowledge which is power for any human being however the information is a complex component because it is available and also hidden we can say in various forms and formats and is static in nature unless the information generated is transmitted and channelized to the user it loss its value in other words we can say the intrinsic value of information lies in its transmission how to transmit this static information to a dynamic user here the information services component is playing a vital role how to bring this static information to the dynamic user how to bridge this gap to bridge this gap actually the information services are playing a vital role to facilitate this transmission a number of services have been developed by library professionals from time to time this module presents an overview of these services that are devised both in traditional environment as well as online information environment the service component actually develops high degree of rapport between the information source and the user the information services as you observe in libraries today were redesigned and reoriented from time to time suitable to user demands indeed the concept of information services has a long history that can be traced back from 19th century reference service to the present digital services the concept of information service has its roots in the personal assistance offered in the public libraries of usa in the late 19th century that is during 1870s later various 
services have emerged under the umbrella of term information services the details we will discuss later while discussing about the evolution of information services we can trace them back to 1870s when the concept of personal assistance has emerged but this uh, evolution can be divided into three periods one is reactive second period is proactive and the current period is real time in the reactive we will call them as reference services that is when the user visits the library and asks for, for some information in response to his demand we have provided the services these are called as reactive type of services even today we are providing these reactive type of services more so in uh, academic libraries and public libraries second type is proactive services that is these are anticipatory in anticipation of users visit to the library for example in a scientific organization or in a university library we know a one particular professor is working on or a particular scientist is working on a particular top research area and uh, the current journals have covered that particular area so we will select all those articles and we will provide them with that information in anticipation of users demand we are providing user with the information and keeping him abreast of the current developments in his field these are the latest articles arrived in your field or in your field of interest we are intimating these are the alert services otherwise called as current awareness service selective dissemination of information service all these are the alert services alert services are the anticipatory services without user demand we have a user profile keeping in view that user profile we are providing him with the information services so these are called as proactive services at present in the virtual environment especially in the web based services like web 2.0 and web 3.0 services it is real time environment here we are having rss feeds or virtual reference service these are the real time services we are providing so we can evolution we can see from the proactive services till the real time services the following presentation will discuss in detail about each type of these services now let us start from the evolution of reference service the earliest period function of the libraries they have collected and preserved the material in the latter period they have organized it that is technical processing using some classification and cataloging and they thought that that is sufficient but when the number of volumes have increased then the user could not find the document that he needed so he demanded for the personalized service so because scholars found difficult to locate information they have demand to have some personal assistance in finding the information and the initial stages of personal assistance were rudimentary and quite perifer peripheral to the library's function the emergence of reference service came in the last quarter of the 19th century actually it was samuel swett greens who propounded the concept of personal assistance in 1876 which later called as aid to reader or assistance to reader and this concept was supported by melville dewey and other library professionals of that age and got much uh, popularity and almost all public libraries in usa have introduced this service and they used to call it as special publics or bibliotherapy such type of uh, nomenclature was also included in the public libraries of those days the second uh, part is evolution of documentation service or information services during 20th century there is phenomenal growth of primary literature especially the second world war necessitated speedy dissemination of information that is the research findings uh, developed in one particular place have to be transmitted to other scientists in other countries otherwise they cannot cope up with the scientific research as well as the medical care every aspect so for this purpose listing of articles published in journals in narrow subject areas to provide access to current information became a necessity thus the concept of documentation was emerged so different service is only proactive because for those who are coming to the library we are providing assistance but here 
without user demand we have to prepare certain list and when the user visits the library or without visiting the library we have to provide him the services for this purpose the documentation services have been developed documentation is a process of collecting and subject classifying all the records of new observations of scientific research remember making them available at need to to the discoverer and inventor According to Ranganathan, it is promotion and practice of bringing into use nascent micro thought. Nascent here means current, current micro thought that is periodical publications by a specialist, which is pinpointed, exhaustive, and expeditious. This concept has gained much popularity in special libraries and not in the public libraries. Public libraries have confined themselves to the reference service. Academic libraries became in between both reference as well as documentation. But documentation services are more popularized in the scientific libraries, that is special libraries. At the same time, information services have also been developed, that is evolution of information services. Well, the major features of information services were developed in the mid 20th century so it has a recent origin their particular concerns and activities are continually changing as user needs and information resources change in fact we can say the information services is an emergence of 1960s and they got their full-fledged structural uh, basis in 19, late 1970s and 80s. Of course, from then onward, they didn't look back and there are a variety of services that we are able to provide. The services are provided in anticipation of an expressed need or in response to identified needs by the user. The services range from directional, actual search for information, extraction and synthesis of information to delivery of information that is providing the user with the actual information. In a parallel development, public libraries of the West began in 1970s, the information and referral services, but these are mostly used in public libraries. Then the next development is evolution of online services. Online information services emerged from the computer scientists and not from the library scientists. Reference service is from library scientists, but online services which we have made use of for the alert services like current awareness service, selective dissemination of information services are a contribution by computer scientists. In this context, we have to mention much about HP Loon of IBM computers who developed the concept of selective dissemination of information. In their databases, they have a lot of information at IBM. What he thought was, this information should not be wasted like this. It should be channelized to the employees within the organization so that they can make use of this information for furthering. The same concept was adopted by library professionals in the traditional environment because in those days we have not, in 1960s, computers were used only for automation and not for information services. So the same concept was adopted by library professionals in the traditional environment as current awareness service and selective dissemination of information services. Let us know more about it. The application of computer to the information storage, processing and retrieval had brought in revolutionary changes in the nature of information services. Now we are having the networked information services. The credit to online services will go to HP Loon of IBM who introduced in 1959 the selective dissemination of information, the personalized service because uh, the IBM used to process huge data and using these databases he used to provide the personalized services to each group according to their work on hand. Similar services called as alert service or current awareness services were developed during the same period in the traditional print environment. At present, a variety of services are being offered online like virtual reference desk, bulletin board, email, RSS, wikis, semantic web and ontologies etc. The information services are undergoing a changing pattern from time to time. The provision of information services basically depend on two factors. One is the sources and the other is the user. To bridge the gap between these two only information services we are providing. The nature of information sources 
keeps on changing from clay tablets to the present digital tablets. The nature of user in terms of their approach, need, demand and seeking behavior that keeps on changing in relation to their work on hand. For example, once the users used to visit the library and the reading place was not sufficient to provide them the facility. But now the users visit to the library became rare because they, they want to get the information to their desktop or to their laptop in their room or in the hostel or in the workplace or at their home. So the change occurred in the information seeking behavior of the user as well as the information sources. Because of these two changes, the information services also underwent changing pattern. So the information services are evolved from basic to advanced. Basically, the different service has a gradual growth as a reader's advisory of 1920s, instruction or guidance and information search and retrieval. Reader's advisory to assist the readers in selecting the best books, instruction service to improve the reading habits and utilization of the library resources, and then providing information or answer to reference queries, that is short-range reference service, long-range reference service, etc. of 1930s, 40s, 50s, etc. Then came the compilation of subject bibliographies as an extension of long-range reference service. As I have already mentioned, from 1960s onwards, alerting service or current awareness service, selective dissemination service have emerged. Repackaging the original information by condensation and evaluation of suitable as to be suitable to the user needs came into existence from 1960s onwards and have much uh, popularized during 80s. Delivery of information through borrowing, that is the lending service, reprography and translation. These are the support services, reprography and translation support services. So these also have emerged in the 60s and 70s. The pattern was initiated in public and academic libraries and in fact, even today, it is visible in majority of these libraries. In special libraries, it is more analytical and synthesizing. How the change have occurred? Now let us have a comparison between the mechanism and the service. Professor Seta Rama has introduced the concept of mechanism and services. Let us have a detailed view about this. Mechanism, reference mechanism or referral mechanism that is when the user comes to the library and asks for a particular information on his demand will refer the available documents in the library and will provide him with the books or will refer him to an organization or a source from where he can get the information that is referral. So these are the mechanisms. Through these mechanisms we are providing reference service or information referral service. So these are the reference service type. Next one is announcement mechanism. Announcement is alerting again. So, before user visits the library, we are informing him, we are alerting him, we are announcing to him through email or through phone or by any other means that these are the current documents available in the library or we have acquired these documents that may serve your purpose. So, we are announcing to the user or we are alerting the user these are the current documents available. This is again current awareness service and selective dissemination of information service. The next mechanism is accretion. Accretion is nothing but augmentation or adding. For example, in index, we are adding the index term. In abstract, we are adding the abstract. That is, it is not the original. Original document is not having neither the index term nor the abstract. But we are adding it. So, this is called as accretion. So, the mechanism here is we are augmenting or we are adding something, some value which is not available in the original. So, these type of services are called as indexing and abstracting services. So, that is the mechanism is accretion and service is indexing and abstracting. The next type of mechanism is evaluate. So, the existing literature we have to scan through or we have to review and we have to evaluate 
for its suitability to the user's demand or the user's requirement and accordingly we have to prepare the reviews. So, these are called as, so review is the services we are preparing, maybe state of the art review or trend report or whatever it may be and the mechanism here we have applied is evaluation. We have evaluated the existing literature to prepare this review. So, that is the mechanism and this is the service. Next one is support services or uh, delivery services or dissemination services. The user after getting the information, he may wants to have a copy of it. For example, he through current awareness services, you have provided a list and in that list we have or through abstracting services, you have provided him with a list and through that list he, have got, he got information that one particular document is available in German language which is exactly what he is searching for, that is exactly suitable for his project on hand. So, for that purpose, he wants to have a translated version of that particular article. So, we have to provide such support service. The uh, translated version may be already available, may be at uh, NISCARE in the, within the nation or may be in the, at UNESCO at the international level or European Translation Center, ne Netherlands at the European level, uh, EU, EU level. So, the already the document may be available you have to find out. If not available, you have to get it translated and serve his needs. So, these are called as delivery services or documentary services. That is, we are providing the user with exact documentation. Even reprography service also will come under this. So, you have provided him with a particular article, but he wants to have a copy of that article, a copy of that particular research report, a copy of that uh, conference proceeding article. So, for this purpose, you have to provide him with a copy of it, reprographic copy of it, so Xerox copy of it. So, reprographic services and translation services will come under this document services, that is you are providing document, a copy of a document. Even lending service also will come to some extent under this because we are providing him with the document itself, that is a journal or journals usually we do not issue, uh, issue them for outside the library or we may provide even the book or a research report we may issue him. So, lending service or more mostly actually support services are reprography service and translation service will come under this document services. We are providing the user with the exact document or a copy of a document. Now, let us start with the reference service. Reference service actually GUI has named ALA. Now, we call it as American Library Association, but he renamed it as Ask Library Anything. That was the starting point for reference service way back in 1876. So, the purpose is providing information using reference books, then providing user education, that is your assistant orientation and making him to learn how to make use of the books, then literature search, then referral service that is providing information which is not available in our library but providing him with the assist uh, with the address from where he can get that information. For example, providing the user with the address of a plastic surgeon whom he can contact to get that information. The next development is current awareness service. Current awareness services are meant for the speedy announcement of newly acquired information documents. This is because the information published to reach a library, it takes minimum one, one year to two years because it has to be transmitted through C-mail. Now, we are getting online, so it, it is not taking much time. But during 80s and 90s especially, during 70s, 80s and 90s, three, these three decades we can say that the foreign periodicals used to be trans, uh, supplied through C-mail. So, C-mail used to take 6 months, they used to book it as a bulk, so this bulk to be booked will take again 6 months, so almost January issue we used to get only in November or December. So, to bridge this time lag, time lag is a major problem, to bridge this time lag, the current awareness services have been developed, that is current contents, that is just publishing only the contents pages of all journal art, journals contents pages will be published, uh, will be bunched together and sent through airmail. So, within a week we will get that 
and it is an announcement that this particular article is coming this particular subject has already done some research has already been done on this subject and this is available in this particular article that is going to be pub that is already published and you are going to get it so such type of uh, announcement mechanism the best example is current contents published by the institute for scientific information now it is a part of thomson reuters Next service is selective dissemination of information. It is a current awareness system which alerts the user with latest publication in specific field. That is, it is a personalized service in a specific field of interest. The service is made possible by maintaining user profile and matching it with documents as soon as they enter the system. Then other type of uh, current awareness service or alert services are announcement of research in progress and notification for forthcoming conferences and newspaper clippings. So, some examples are already given in the slides, you can go through them. So far we have seen reference service, current awareness services, etc. In reference service, what we are doing, that is, uh, we are, when the user asks for some information, we are referring the existing reference sources like encyclopedias, directories or uh, whatever it may be, handbooks, manuals, etc. And we are providing him with the information. In case of current awareness service, we are alerting the user that this is the latest information arrived in the library in your chosen field or in the field of your interest. We are alerting the user. So, we are providing information to the user only from the existing sources as they are available. So, you have not changed anything. Whatever we have received, we are passing on that information to the user. We are acting only as a bridge between the static information and the user. But in information analysis and consolidation type of services, we are adding value. That is the basic difference. That is why these are the most advanced services. Here, not just providing information as it is we have received, but we have to add value to it. For example, abstracting. We are adding an abstract. Review. We are evaluating and then we are preparing a review. So, we are not providing to the user whatever information we have received in the same condition, but the condition has been changed. Why this became necessity? This became a necessity because of the proliferation of literature. Lot of information is available even in a narrower subject. You know, we will call it as information explosion or exponential growth of literature. Because of this, especially a scientist, whose time is more valuable in conducting a research than reading, the searching and reading. So, he needs somebody to search information on his behalf and condense it, compile it and providing it. That is, some value has to be added. On behalf of the scientist, someone has to search the information, condense the information or compile the information and providing it to him in a capsule form so that he need not waste his time. He can use that time productively for his research purpose and that can be that time searching time can be done by the librarian. For this purpose, the information analysis and consolidation services have been emerged from late 70s onwards. The original information is analyzed and condensed or surrogated using data elements that represent the documents provided as much literature as possible on a subject that is exhaustive literature hence prepared to meet the exhaustive approach of users. These are broadly classified as condensation and evaluation type. First let us see the condensation type. The literature gathered is exhaustive in its coverage and analysis as well as. For example, bibliographies and indexes describe every element of the document representation. The condensed type of services are categorized further as location type that is indexes, subject bibliographies, catalogs, etc. Accretion type that is some value is added that is abstract services, extracts, technical digests, etc. The condensation type are subject bibliographies that is lists of materials, union catalogs, example national union catalog scientific serials in India published by Niskare and information analysis uh, indexes that indicate uh, the data or information through descriptors, example index medicus, etc. 
and abstracts and extracts summarize the content that is example biological abstracts etc which we have already discussed under indexes and abstracts in detail so under information analysis uh, services we have seen condensed type, condensation type of services the next one is evaluative services so someone is reading the entire article reviewing it and providing the essence of it the condensation type of services provide information on bibliographical details of the document that facilitate identification and location of document to provide the user with the intellectual content of the literature in a consolidated form evaluation services are developed for example we are preparing a market survey or we are preparing a state of the art report or we are preparing a review that helps a decision maker to take a decision that helps the execu executive to implement a particular program so they want the background information but they cannot go through the volumes of literature that is available they may have information they may have the volumes also but they want someone to go through the entire literature and prepare a gist of it the essence of it in a manner that is useful for them to take a decision so for this purpose the information repackaging services evaluation services have been developed the stages of repackaging are selective extraction correlation and evaluation of information some products of evaluation services are state of the art reports these are emphasizes on recency or up to dateness example ifla information literacy state of the art report of 2012 and digest that is technical digest also we'll call it as digest are tools for management and executives to locate cases on specific issues and to take a decision based on that for future development for example supreme court cases us supreme court cases united states supreme court digest are our supreme court cases these are the digest services the next type of services are support services as has already been discussed under uh, mechanism and services described by professor sita rama support services are document delivery services the user is provided with a document or some information or some data he can read it and he can leave it there sometimes he wants to have a copy of it in such cases we have to provide him with a copy of it generally lending service will take care of it but the major issue is some books we will not give for issue for example a research report we don't give the entire document for issue even journals also current journals also we don't give them for issue so lending service is not able to satisfy the user need but he wants to have a copy of it so the next alternative is copying a, that particular article and give it to him here intellectual property rights also will come that is copyright protection document copyright protection will be there so that we have to take care of while doing this uh, copy copying and uh, providing the same to the user this is because uh, for academic and research purpose copyright violation violation will not be there if it is really for academic purpose we can take a photocopy of it and we can serve the user with that document another issue is translation that is if the document is available in another language which user cannot follow we have to get it translated in fact translation services are not uh, regular services in the library context librarians are not translators neither the translators are available in the libraries but there are translation centers for every nation even at the international level also so library has an obligation to serve the user with his required information so if the user wants to have a copy of the translated version we have to provide that translation service also so reprography service translation service will come under support services these two services are discussed in detail in the presentation that follows translation services are necessary because 50% of scientific publications are in non english languages mostly in german french and russian languages provision of translation services became imperative because of this 
there are translation pools or banks at international and national levels. The translation pools maintain indexes as tools to locate the translated works. So, already translated works are there. So, every article we need not translate again and again. So, already translated works are available there. From them, we can get that article. For example, UNESCO World Bibliography of Translations. The index translation is a list of books translated in the world. That is an international bibliography of translations. It is created in 1932 and still going on. In India, Niskare provides translation of science and technology documents from 20 foreign languages into English. Of course, it is a demand based service. If you want, they will provide. The indexes are available as online databases. Automatic translation services are also available. Now, we are having many software available even on the web that translates automatically uh, one language into another language. The present information environment has witnessed lot of changes in collection, users and their impact on the service also. Naturally, service environment has changed because of these changes. First, let us see what is a collection. Previously, we used to have only print collection and we used to serve the users only from that print collection. Now, we are in a hybrid environment. We are having print collection as well as the electronic access to documents, both in open access and the subscribed ones through e-consortia. So, there is a need to provide access to documents available in the library and through remote access also. Then coming to the user, previously users visit the library and they used to browse the shelves and select their own documents. But now users are not visiting the library, but still they are selecting and using the documents by having the remote access, maybe through campus network or through internet. So, for this purpose, again, the librarian has to change his attitude. The librarian now is not just a serving those who are visiting the library, but he is a facilitator, he is a navigator, he is a knowledge manager, he is an aggregator. So, Besides the traditional work, he has to change his uh, work schedules to be suitable to these latest trends. Because of the changes uh, both in the collection as well as user attitude as well as the library function, librarian's function, these three have their impact on the services. Naturally, services have also changed. So, now we are providing a variety of web-based services. For example, Libraries are have, librarians are maintaining virtual library desk, VRD we will call it as virtual reference desk and we are also having the RSS feeds, through RSS feeds also we are providing the alert services, current awareness services now we are offered through RSS feeds and we are also having uh, semantic web applications also we are making use of, ontologies we are making use of to provide uh, intellectual web to the user. So, all these applications are there. So, now it is discriminated services. Now, it is marketing that is promotional services. So, these are the current trends occurred in the information environment of information services. So, now let us see what are the current trends in information services. Now, the information services are a blend of traditional as well as electronic. The libraries are continuing the traditional services like keeping bibliographic, reference, current awareness, indexing and delivery of uh, full text, etc. At the same time, they are providing the bibliographic tools like web packs, embedded information services like uh, literacy training modules, information literacy training modules and open access institutional repositories, bibliographies, value-added aggregator services, etc. And a variety of new products and services like library 2.0 and library 3.0 based services. After having a basic understanding of uh, online information services, let us have a comparison of traditional as well as the digital services. In traditional services, we have offered the reference service that you have understood well. Same thing we are offering in the online environment also, which is called as virtual reference desk or digital reference service. In the traditional uh, environment, we have offered user orientation, 
or user education. The same thing in online environment we are calling it as information literacy. Information literacy is not confined only to the documents within the library or making use of a library and different types of documents, but it is associated with technological awareness and how to make use of technology to access information. This we are providing as embedded service in curriculum. So, libraries are also providing, but it became a part of the curriculum also. That is the change occurred. Another type of service we have offered is subject bibliographies. Bibliographic service we have already seen. It is very important because that provides the list of documents required by a user. That is the basic core, core service. I told you that that is the core service. Same thing we are providing as bibliographies. So, what is available on the web? We are providing a list of bibliographies. Then another type of service is indexing and abstracting. Same service we are offering here in the online environment as aggregator service. So, in the indexing and abstracting services, we are adding value, some value that is maybe an abstract or maybe the index term or maybe a condensed extract, whatever it may be. Same thing we are calling it as aggregator service. In the aggregator service also, we are doing the same thing for the documents that are available on the web. That is for the online documents we are providing, we are adding value through indexing and abstracting and we are providing it. JGate is the best example for aggregator service in uh, that is available in India. Last one is advanced services. This we are providing through institutional repositories. So, previously in special libraries they used to provide only advanced search that is review search like that, but here we are having digital repositories or institutional repositories. Uh, these are more advanced in nature because they are providing access to the intellectual output of that organization or institution which is more advanced that is total uh, access to the intellectual output of that organization is made available not only to the organizations members even to the outside members. So, such advanced search services are also made available in the online environment. Let us uh, discuss uh, one by one all these services. Let us start with uh, information literacy. The current services we are providing are information literacy that is it is a literacy is not a new concept to LIS as I already told you it is user education only, but now we are providing it as a to improve the skill of the user. In to access information and to make use of the online information. This became necessity because the technologies offer an opportunity to the user to have self access to information without intermediaries. However, the e-readiness rankings are not encouraging. To resolve this problem, to improve the e-readiness of uh, e-readiness to go through the online information, the information literacy programs have been developed to improve their uh, technological skills to recognize, locate, compare and organize and synthesize information available on the web. The methods usually adopted includes the information search tools and strategies that is it is a package actually they will follow instruction packages they are following and they have adopted a different uh, modules for importing information literacy that is they may be introductory courses or they may be standalone courses they may be in in integrated along with the curriculum or they may be just uh, online tutorials. The next type of services we are providing are webliography. Already I have told you about webliography that is the word was coined by James Frankel in 2000 uh, AD and uh, webliography presents a wide range of electronic resources related to a specific subject that are freely available on the <coughs> internet. Webliography became a necessity. We may think why already the information is available on the web and the user can download them and he can prepare a list of his own. Why the library has to do it? What is the purpose of it? It is because limited user time to access the internet, especially in India, especially now in our own academic libraries, the users are getting one or two hours access to <coughs> internet. And then lack of search skills. They may search wild way and not to the point. Difficult to find pertinent information that is relevant, relevant information out of the treasure of the verb. Web is having a treasure of information, but how to get the relevant information? Need for bibliographical control to identify and locate information to save time 
to have optimum access and use of information. These have necessitated for the bibliography compilation. So, bibliography compilation, the steps includes the selection of a topic, searching the web and selecting the best among them and creating a web page and posting everything on the web page as hyperlinks so that the user can access it online. The next service is digital reference services. We are familiar with the reference service that is uh, limited to the sources available in the library. But digital reference service is not limited to the sources available in the library, but it is available on the web. So it includes both print as well as uh, sources available on the internet. The internet is expanding traditional library collection and improving location and access to reference sources. Digital reference service allows users to get information from a library at any time, either access the library's website or use the late night reference services. For example, ask a librarian, I am a librarian, where patterns can send an instant message to librarians. All these are the examples of it. What is a digital reference service? Basically, it is ask a service. It is an internet based question and answer service. In addition to answering questions, experts may also provide users with referrals to other online and print so sources of information. That is not only the librarian giving the answers for the questions from the information that is having in within the library, but he may connect the student to an expert who can clarify his doubt with authentic information. The question answer process in digital reference service is modeled after the traditional reference service. As in a face-to-face -face interview, experts determine the amount of information appropriate for the user, the applicability of that information and the level of information required. So these are all the advantages of digital reference service. Example, electronic access to reference service ARS launched by the University of Maryland Health Services Library in Baltimore way back from 1984. The methods adopted for a digital reference service or digital reference service ask a service function human intermediaries evaluating that is via email or web interface. Uh, new questions may be uh, answered by experts or the expert supplies either actual answer or some combination of it and responses are sent to the user's email address. Ask Eric is an example. Internet public library is the best example for librarians. Next one is aggregator services. Aggregator services is related to open access, to be frank. In spite of the availability of millions of data as free access on the web, majority of the users in our country are not able to make optimum utilization. The pro probable reasons are lack of awareness, non-availability of net access or lack of time. Hence, the librarians have to play the role of an aggregator. Aggregator collects the freely available information on the web, categorize them, that is just like our traditional classification, organize them and index them, that is our traditional cataloging and disseminate to the relevant individual or group. Why we have to go for category, uh, aggregation? There are a number of directories and websites that led to the open access books, journals, reference sources, content proceedings, etc. The LS professionals have to search the electronic resources, scan and see relevant information, add value with indexing and provide to the users. For example, there are a number of sources that provide open access information, open access journals like uh, DOAJ, Open J Gate of Informatics India, free ebooks. There are plenty of uh, uh, free ebook sites like World Ebook Fair, Free Books, FreeTechBooks.com, ebook for free. So many sites are there. There are a number of e-reference sources, Internet Public Library Reference, Cathy Shrock's Guide for Educators, Electronic Reference Sources and professional websites like BUBL Link, Intuit for Social Sciences, Info Librarian, Informed Librarian, so many, so many sources are there. So, we have to create an aggregator services. The procedure in creation of aggregated services, librarians can download articles on specific themes from the free web resources, aggregate them as part as per theme that is topic or main, and maintain folders, make them available to users or forward them to the concerned faculty or researchers or scientists as email attachments. 
This is the aggregated service. Such value added services will facilitate the higher order of user satisfaction. Example, EBSCO information services, Informatics India, Bangalore's uh, uh, JGate service. These are the best example of uh, aggregated services. Then institutional repositories. Every institution is having a number of resources, but these are not coming into light. Majority of people do not know what is available in a particular institution. So, an institutional repository is an online locus for collecting and preserving in digital form the intellectual output of an institution, particularly a research institution or a university. It is organizing institutionally generated information accessible online for on-campus and global users. It is necessary because the visibility to the intellectual output of an institution is not there. And especially at this juncture, I can give you one example. Our publications are not cited by Western pu publications, Western authors. Why? Because lack of visibility. This is a major problem. And sometimes we are also not able to get some authentic information from the world. That is, global access is not there for the local information. And the local information, local people are not getting the global access. So, to resolve this problem, institutional repositories have been developed. So, in the creation of uh, institutional repository, some policies and procedures have to be adopted. And there are open source digital library software like uh, DSpace, GSDL, ePrints, etc. And even some uh, library management software also includes uh, digital libraries like uh, Soul includes some, some parts of it and uh, initiate digitizing or gather digital collections first. First we have to collect the data and then we can have a review committee to check the authenticity of these publications. Whatever the uh, um, uh, faculty members have given we cannot include. There should be authenticity should be there. So for that we should have a committee for, for selection and then create metadata and repository of scholarly publications on the selected software whether GSTL or DSpace or any selected uh, software. Make the repository operational for browse and search. In this module, we have dealt with information services from their, from their inception in 1870s as personal assistance to the contemporary information environment like aggregator services, digital repositories, bibliographies, information literacy, so on and so forth. We have also seen the traditional services and the mechanisms used to provide those services and the advanced online services and how the information, environ information service environment has changed to accommodate all these services. We have also seen that uh, the web 2.0 and 3.0 developments have provided opportunities or opened new windows to create library 2.0 and library 3.0 based services. In future, robots may also provide these information services. So, LS professionals have to grab the opportunity of this digital environment, have to keep abreast of these developments and avail the opportunities, train themselves and provide the information services suitable to the digital environment. Then only the library profession can survive in this ever-changing information service environment. Libraries have an inherent obligation to provide information services. There is no doubt about it. The information services underwent significant changes from the status of personal assistance to reader, that is reference service, to the present web-based services, that is virtual reference service, so on and so forth. Both the traditional and web-based services are important. Because the time has changed and web-based services have come, we cannot say traditional services are not useful. Traditional services have their own importance because everything is not non-print as far as India is concerned. Still, paper, paper society is there and paperless society is also there. So, it should, be a it should be a balance between both. There are four types of information services, namely reference, current awareness, information analysis and consolidation and support services like translation. These services are available in traditional 
library environment as well as these are available even in the virtual environment with change in nomenclature like information literacy, bibliography, digital difference, aggregator services and so on and so forth. But the basic principle behind the information services is bridge the gap between the static information that is the hidden knowledge and the dynamic user who is in need of that knowledge. So we are there to bridge that gap with the help of the services and we may have to we, we have to follow the existing services and we may have to devise more and more services as time is coming as per the user service user needs and we have to customize our service base to be suitable to the user community. Thank you very much.